What's up guys, Everything Apple Pro here, and I've already extensively covered the iPhone 6S and 6S Plus, but in this video, I wanted to give you my personal review on the new iPhone 6S. Now, to preface, I wanted to mention where I'm coming from. My first phone with service was an LG Envy. Thanks, Dad, by the way. Then came a Droid Incredible, then a Galaxy Nexus. My first iPhone with service was the iPhone 4, then the 4S, 5, 5S, 6 Plus, and now the 6S Plus. But the iPhone 6S is something else. I mean, it's so similar to an iPhone 6, but at the same time, so much has changed. I know, and I get so sick and tired of people telling me there's nothing different. It looks the same. I mean, yeah. Yeah, it looks the same, but what are you going to be doing with your phone? Are you just going to be looking at it or are you going to be using it? So the moment I actually got this thing, I noticed there's a different texture on the actual outside. It's a lot grippier. That was one of my issues with the iPhone 6. So let me go ahead and unbox the other colors first here and I'll get into more detail. My personal favorite color is the rose gold. That is my personal iPhone 6S and I absolutely love the new color. So the very first moment you're gonna pick up a 6S, you're gonna notice it is heavier, slightly thicker, and the texture is different. That texture is pretty nice because I noticed that the 6 was so slippery, and now you get a little bit of a more planted feel while holding it. And this thing is beautiful. I love how minimalistic the design is. Apple did away with those FCC labels and the IMEI on the rear of the device, meaning there's less text and it's a very clean rear. If only the lens wasn't protruding, at least there's no carrier logos with the iPhones. But it's a beautiful design evolved from the so you start using it. The first thing you notice is how wicked fast this is. It made me realize my iPhone 6 Plus was slow. How could it be slow? It was the fastest thing when it came out. This is what happens every single year. I mean, the Geekbench scores are off the charts. It's a dual core processor, yet it gets such insane amount of power. I mean, Apple really, really did well. And the two gigabytes of RAM is just icing on the cake. What that helps with is reloading pages. So I notice going back and forth from applications, you're gonna notice less refreshes, especially in Safari. So Safari, you know how you always have to reload pages when going back into it. With the 6S, you'll notice that those pages are already cached and ready to go. So you're gonna notice a lot less time wasting reloading things and more time doing things. Now, the one area I was very surprised with was Touch ID. I remember in an earlier video of mine, I said, I don't understand how Apple could make this thing better. Well, they did. It's now more accurate and twice as fast. It's especially more accurate if your fingers are slightly damp. Next, the display. Although it didn't change, I was very happy to learn that Apple put a lot of effort into making their phones more durable. Not only did they make it more drop and scratch resistant, did you know Apple actually added a rubber seal around the display in the 6S? That's to make it more water resistant. And in my test, it definitely showed. So I'm very happy that Apple has put a lot of effort into upgrading the durability of the iPhone 6S. I mean, I ran over this thing twice still works. I mean, the 3D touch still works despite a shattered display. It's very tough. You're going to have a hard time trying to break it even if you want to. So with that new material comes 3D touch on the display. And right now it's a little dry. So personally, I think it adds a little bit to iOS, although not as much as Apple makes it out to be right now. It will get better. The true reason I love 3D touch is because Apple made it available to third party developers. Already we're starting to see some very clever uses for it. Not only can it save you a little bit of time, it adds a lot of functionality, especially with gaming. I'm looking forward to see all the games that take advantage of that display so you press harder, you shoot harder, I don't know. I mean, I'm very curious to see where 3D Touch goes, even though it's dry right now on iOS, so it will get better. So with 3D Touch also comes that new Taptic engine. It replaces the vibration motor, and personally, I find myself just toggling on and off the sound just to feel it. It feels awesome. I mean, especially when I get a phone call, it's so much more noticeable, so much more responsive, and it's not as noisy. So what else? Well, I love the front-facing flash. It's a great idea. Apple took it from Snapchat, but they improved it. They made that custom chip just to flash the display three times brighter, and I love how it's color-coordinated to match your conditions. and live photos. I mean, they're pretty cool. They take up double the storage, but at the same time, they help you relive those memories. It records a little bit of sound and a couple seconds before and after taking the photo. There is a problem though. Sometimes after you're finished taking the photo, you'll lean your phone down and the live photos capture that. Hopefully it'll be fixed soon. So the rear camera, I was blown away to be honest. And when I first saw the footage blown up on my display, wow. 4K looks stunning on the iPhone. Apple waited and they did it right. Imagine if Apple released it earlier and it wasn't as good as it is now. So Apple took their time and the footage looks great as a result. The individual pixels on the lens are smaller, so there is more potential for noise in darker environments, but the quality is so good. 
so very good. I mean, I was impressed. The color reproduction is a little on the dry side, though. The thing I like about the galaxies is that they're very vibrant, the colors that they record, but I guess the iPhones are a little more true to life. They don't, you know, over-exaggerate the colors. At the same time, man, the focus is so much faster due to those extra focus pixels. I love it. The 4K, though, will take up so much storage, and I was disappointed that Apple didn't add optical or video image stabilization to the iPhone 6S. I mean, it's pretty jittery if you use it while walking around the video recording. If you hold it with one hand, you're gonna notice that shake, so I don't like that. And as an added bonus, Apple did upgrade the capability of the slow motion. You can now get 120 frames per second at 1080p. 720p, 240 remains the same, just slightly higher quality. So. I absolutely love it. I mean, slow motion for me, I use it so much and it can be so fun just doing random little things and seeing them in slow motion like my vicious kitty here. But slow motion is personally one of my favorite things about the iPhones in general. They just do it so well. And here are just some images that I snapped in my backyard. And like I said earlier, I don't like the format Apple uses. I wish it was wider and I wish the colors popped a little more. All the photos have such icy looking colors. So the wireless internals of this device received a huge upgrade and I love that there are more LTE bands. You know, I travel with my phone often. I go buy a SIM card in another country, so it's great. I'll have more support for that. LTE and Wi-Fi are faster, but you know, try finding a carrier or Wi-Fi that supports that speed yet. So we're not able to take full advantage of that. Bluetooth 4.2 is great though. I've noticed a much more stable connection in my car when I hook it up to wireless. So here are a couple other things. The battery life is good, not great, good i mean it didn't build upon the six it actually got a smaller battery but the optimization is decent so you're not going to notice that much of a difference however this thing heats up i mean if you're really using it it's going to heat up so much more than the iphone 6 especially when charging now another thing is storage 16 gigabytes of base memory storage what is this apple why are you price gouging us i mean i know it raises your margins and all but with 4k and live photos how are we supposed to manage with a 16 gigabyte device that's just forcing people to upgrade to 64. so that's just about it. Now what I like about Apple in general is that they will make this thing so much better with software updates. We've already gotten two for it and we're going to keep getting more and more with more features, better stability, a little bit faster performance. I love how good Apple is with support. So these are the things I in particularly liked about the iPhone 6s. For me, the slow motion 4K video and 3D touch for third party applications is the highlight of this new device. Plus, it's a lot faster in all of the areas where it matters. And there's a lot I didn't like about this guy as well. The live photos could use some work to where you're done taking the picture and you move your phone and you're going to see that in the live photo. It also heats up very often. I'm not sure that can be fixed by software and it gets random resets. Sometimes I'll leave my phone there and it'll completely cut out power. I'll have to hard reset it to get it to turn on. Don't know what that's about. 3D touch is pretty limited. This is something that's going to go away with time, but there's not that much use for it. It's not necessary. I want Apple to make it necessary for the whole iOS experience. There's no optical image stabilization. Apple wants to sell more 6 Pluses, a better profit margin, and same goes for the 16 gigabyte base storage. That's just unacceptable in 2015.